In this video, I'm gonna show you how to zoom in, zoom out, highlight, as well as magnify your screen recordings using Premiere Pro. If that's what you came to learn, let's hop right into it. Before I begin, I just wanna mention that sometimes it may be easier for you to zoom in on your screen using your operating system. So I don't know exactly how to do this on Windows, but if you were on Mac, if you went to your system preferences and accessibility, and go to zoom, there's a whole bunch of parameters here where you can set it up so you can zoom in on your screen. So like right here, if I hold control on my keyboard and zoom in on my mouse, it allows me to zoom in on my screen. There's also that picture in picture style so I could zoom in here and kind of do this thing. So that's just something to take into consideration where if you are looking to zoom in during a screen recording or if you're doing something live and you wanna zoom in, maybe look at a way to do it within your operating system because that may be faster than having to zoom in or magnify in post. With that being said, let's move into Premiere Pro. The simplest way that I can show you to do this is a jump cut to go straight into the action. So on the clip right here, what I'm gonna do is go to my razor tool, click that and find where I want it to zoom in. So maybe about right here, create a cut and then make a second cut at the end of the clip where I want it to go back to the regular screen size. And on this middle clip, what we wanna do is highlight the clip and go to your effects controls window. If you don't have your effects controls window up, just go to window, effects controls. And I'm going to adjust my scale and position. What I like to do is just click and drag on the numbers right here. On the position, the left number is your X axis and the right number is your Y axis. So I'm just gonna move that middle clip over and scale it in. So the outcome looks like this, where it starts out big, then it cuts to the action and then cuts right back. Now, the other way to do this is to actually animate. Instead of jump cutting to the action, we wanna animate and zoom the camera in. Now we're going to be manipulating or keyframing the motion within your effects controls window. And we wanna move the playhead to where we want to start the zoom in. So right here, and I'm going to hit this toggle animation stopwatch on the position and scale. Now I'm going to go forward 10 frames. You can make your animation however long you want to. I just find that 10 frames is a happy medium. So I'm gonna hold shift and hit right on my keyboard twice. So one, two. What that did was skip many frames. Now what we wanna do is zoom into the subscribe button and center it. Right now we have an action that looks like this. Zoop. Subscribe notification bell, all, and now we want to zoom out. So with the playhead at the spot where you want the zoom out to start, hit these two buttons right here on the position and scale. So click this one and click that one. Then again, I'm going to skip 10 frames. So hold shift, hit right twice. And now I'm just gonna hit this button and it will automatically go back to this full screen where you had your position and scale by default. So the whole action looks like this. Zoom in, subscribe, hit the button, all, zoom out. Pretty cool, right? Well, in some cases, this may not be what you wanna do. Instead of zooming in like this and taking up the whole screen, you might just wanna magnify this part of the screen so it gives the viewer a reference of where you're at on the screen. So the first step to doing that is duplicating your clip right here on the layer on top of it. I'm going to hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows. And while I'm holding that modifier key, I'm gonna click and drag this clip above it. At this point, I wanna look up the crop feature within the effects window and drag that onto our top clip. Now in your effects controls for the top clip, I'm going to click on the word crop. That will bring up these little handles here in the program monitor. And I'm gonna click and drag these handles to where I wanna to magnify to. And to give you a reference, if I unenable this bottom track, that's what it looks like. Now what we're gonna do is scale in on this cropped clip the same like we did with our first example. So I'm gonna make sure that I have my top clip highlighted go up to motion, look at where I want the position and scale to start. So click these two, go 10 frames in and scale this in. As you can see, we kind of got that magnifying effect already taking place. I'm going to go to the end here and that's where I want it to go back to normal. So I click my add remove keyframes, go 10 frames in and go back to reset. So it looks like this right now. Zoop. Subscribe, notifications, all back down. 
So that's a basic way of doing this, but we can make it look so much better. I'm gonna make the background track a little bit darker, and I'm gonna do that with opacity. If you hit these arrow keys, it will take you exactly to your keyframes. What I wanna do is go to my first keyframe and go to the track below it and hit opacity to start my toggle animation on my opacity. Now, because I know that it's 10 frames, I'm just going to go 10 frames in, I'm going to maybe go to 40%. So I'm gonna go back to my top clip, hit the little arrows right here. Now that I know that I'm on the exact spot where it's going to start to scale down, I'll go back to the bottom clip, hit the opacity, go 10 frames, and restore this back to 100%. So it looks something like this. It goes up and goes back down. Now, personally, I think that's enough to really accentuate that magnification of this section, but there is some other things that you can do to make it look even cooler. Like if we go back to our effects and if we look up blur, we could do something like Gaussian blur and put that on our bottom track and follow these same keyframes. So as the opacity gets darker, we're going to keyframe in blurriness on the Gaussian blur. Make sure that you have repeat edge pixels on and then go to the end and as the opacity gets brighter, we restore the blurriness back to zero. So now we get something like this, where it comes up, you see the action of subscribing, hitting the notification bell, and it goes away. One last thing that you could do is add a drop shadow because this is kind of a white on white magnification. So in the effects, I'm going to look up drop. Right here is drop shadow and drag that onto our top clip. This will follow the same premise as what we've been doing where you want to animate it in and out along the same keyframes as your other effects. Adjust the parameters on the drop shadow however you want to. For me, in this example, this is how I'm gonna do it. But the big thing that we want to keyframe though is the opacity of the drop shadow. So as the clip scales up, we go from zero to 100 opacity. And as the clip goes back down, we go from 100 to zero opacity. There's a lot of cool effects going on here. And to be honest, you could take this even further by not making it a link linear movement of it popping out from the screen. It's completely up to you and your creative preference how far you want to take this. But for a basic tutorial like this one, I think I'll leave this technique here because I wanna show you one last tip of highlighting areas of your screen using shapes within Premiere Pro. What we're gonna do is go over here to our toolbar and you could do the pen tool, but if you click and hold on the pen, I'm gonna go to the rectangle tool and just click and drag a rectangle around this section. So as you can see, that makes a little graphic clip here on the timeline. And if you wanted to treat this square like a kind of highlighter effect, just go to the opacity of the graphic, take that down a little bit so you can see through the shape and then highlight the clip hit Command D on Mac or Control D on Windows, and that will automatically put cross dissolves so it fades in and fades out that effect. Another cool way to do this though is instead of making a highlighted box, go up to your shape layer in the effects controls, and I'm going to unclick fill, and now I'm going to click the stroke. What I might do is have my opacity go back to 100, so we have this little square right here. You can change the thickness of the stroke with this number, and you can also change the color of it. But I like this green. And one other thing is instead of doing this cross dissolve, what we could do is go back to our effects window and look up wipe, put on like barn doors as a certain type of way of animating it on. So there's some options. If this video was helpful, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And I dare you to click one of the videos over here. I double dog dare you. Okay, until next time. My name's Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.